Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video where I am going to go over why melee is trash at bossing. And that is the case if your damage is not very good. And we're going to go over why a 10 million DPS profile is not really 10 million DPS. And that is the case for a lot of melee builds. Now, as you can see here, this is Uber Siri Exarc. And Uber Siri Exarc is notoriously bad for melee if you have bad damage, just because you don't finally have. Finally, get to attack the boss. So you can see here what oh, I just said. I finally me. get to attack the boss. He does annihilation. Oh, look, he disappeared again. Very cool. Very cool. And you're just forced to do this over and over again. Now, I spent probably five to six hours doing this boss, and it was a miserable experience. But. On the bright side, we did end up killing it, but as you can see here, the amount of time you can actually spend attacking is very, very low. I can barely even get myself to maximize the DPS on Minotaur. And right here, I have a choice. I can either try to go for the boss, I can try to run to the boss and bring the Minotaur over. But I did try to go over to the boss. A lot of times the boss is actually standing on the burning ground degen. And that means that I don't get enough actual damage on the Minotaur which means that there's more Minotaurs that spawn, and once there's like three or four Minotaurs, then it's going to be really, really bad. Here, I finally get to attack the boss, right? And of course, another phase. So you can see here, melee is extremely, extremely punishing on low damage. And you might be wondering, why is my damage so bad? Now, my damage is actually not that bad on Pop. It's around 10 million or 12 million even. But you will see here how I can deconstruct the Pop that has 10 million damage to bring it all the way down to a realistic number. And the realistic number is going to be very shocking. I'm pretty sure this fight was done with around 2 million DPS or so, or less, purely because the damage uptime is just that bad. And that is damage uptime. So let's see, can we actually fast forward? I think I ended up dying, but did we ever actually end up killing this boss? I think I did over 20 meteor or whatever it's called, the ball phases. Uh, oh look the boss is almost dead this was like three minutes later oh wow look at this finally got it down i think that was probably one of the most crazy fights i've had in poe and here we're going to understand why melee dps is deceiving on bossing now i did decide to play bone shatter slayer for bpl so part of the reason is because i'm trying to do it with an ssf character more or less only thing not SSF is the Ashes, but Ashes is not really that game-breaking. It's not like an Omniscience or something. It's just a very solid amulet. And most people use Ashes for Anomalous Bone Shatter. And you can't stun bosses. So that's something to get out of the way. So I saw my pop damage was around 10 to 12 million. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to breeze through the uber bosses. I'm just going to melee them down with Bone Shatter. But... Boy, oh boy, it was an eye-opening experience. I did finish almost all of the Uber bosses except one, Uber Cyrus. So if you want to see me spend another like couple hours doing it on stream today, you can check it out. It will be very, very fun or very, very frustrating. You might hear a lot of cuss words. So Bone Shatter is actually very, very, very interestingly bad. Now, Bone Shatter has this thing where you have to build up trauma stacks. So the more trauma you have, the more damage you do. And how do you get trauma? Well, you attack. And you attack very, very slowly on this build. Now, the difference between 1 trauma and 20 trauma is 80% more damage. So you're roughly doing double damage. Now, the nice part about Bone Shatter that a lot of people like is the fact you can perma-stun a lot of bosses. However, I do think perma-stunning bosses is a huge, huge trap. Now, the reason behind that is perma-stunning is not really a thing. Because... Think about it. In order to perma stun a boss, you have to do around 1 plus percent of his life per hit. If you're doing that much damage per hit to the boss, well, guess what? The boss is probably going to be dead really, really fast. So there's really no point in even trying to build a build around stunning. So this build has a slow attack speed, around 5 attacks per second, taking a long time to build up the trauma stacks. Character is, however, decently tanky. And, uh, but the 4k life really makes it issue. So if you look at this build right here, we have around 78 res, we have 100% spell suppression, decent amount of physical damage reduction, not actually the best. But the main problem is our life pool is 4k or 3.9k because we're running air against precision. Now the tree is also super scuffed because this is another problem with a lot of melee builds is in order to get 100% spell suppression, you have to travel to here now. And you have to get these nodes, but this is mainly just because I had SSF gear 
my gear was actually just terrible. So you do have a lot of layers of defense. You do have fortify. You have 10% reduced damage while leeching and overleech. So if you take a look over here, the Slayer does have this portion. So this is 10% reduced damage taken while leeching. And that also stacks with the fortify. So very, very, very strong in terms of defenses. But the life pool EHP is kind of low. Now, this is the number one problem, as you saw earlier on, is that damage uptime for melee is absolutely trash. Now, you might be wondering, one of the best builds in the game is Lightning Strike. What about that? Well, Lightning Strike has the ability to attack from a little bit further away than a skill like Bone Shatter. So this is more like true melee, where you have to beat up the boss's ass and sniffing it. That's the main problem. So skills like Spectral Helix, you can be a decently far away. You can't be that far away, but you can still be doing damage. And it does help out a lot. Now, another problem is Path of Building assumes this damage right here. And this damage assumes that you are constantly attacking. So it's around 12.4 million, or is it? So 5.76 attacks per second. Now, this is probably what most people would send you for a pop. And that's what most people would look at. But if you can look at right here, totems actually make up a large portion of your damage. So... We get rid of Ancestral Protector, and then we get rid of Ancestral War Chief, and then we're looking at roughly almost half damage. And let me tell you something, the totems die a lot. It takes you a long time to put up the totems. The time spent putting up the totems means you're not actually attacking the boss. Now, a lot of people also do this for the config, is that you don't have 50 Rage on this build. It's very, very long time to get 50 Rage. And in order to get Rage, you attack once per second on the gloves. Or you can get the Axe Notable right here. I think that gives you 1 Rage per second. So it would take you 50 seconds to build up 50 Rage. So this thing is actually going to be at 0. Now, are you focused? Now, this is not something that's going to be up the whole time. So focus is a craft that you can craft on your Axe that gives you double damage while focused. So this thing is probably not going to be up most of the time. So next up, you have Berserk while you have the Rage. But that's just not something that's going to be up because you can't Berserk when you don't have that much Rage. So once we find the Berserk, we take it off, we see that, oh, we're at 3 million DPS. Now, a lot of times the boss phases and you don't really have Frenzy Charges right away because the only way we can grant Frenzy Charges is we have to hit the enemy at around a 6% chance or so. So if we take, it, take a look at that, then sometimes we don't actually have the Frenzy Charges up. So you take that out, we're at 2.6 million. Now, a lot of times the boss TPs away and we're not, we don't have the pride effect at maximum effect. So you take that away, you are all the way down to 2 million. So this is, was a 12 million DPS profile. Now, next up, trauma stacks. You're not really having 20 trauma stacks all the time because you're kind of running away a lot. So if you turn it down all the way to like maybe 10, which is more realistic, you can see here we are doing an uber boss with around 1.6 million total DPS. And that is really, really bad. Now, of course, you could have set this pop up accurately to start with and it would look like this. But a lot of people fluff up their damage and then they wonder why can't we actually do the boss when we actually have around 10 mil DPS. And the answer is, is that you actually don't really have that DPS ever for melee. Now, you might think, oh, it's around 1.6 million. That's not really that bad. However, this is assuming that you're actually able to be attacking the boss 24-7. So you're not really actually going to be able to attack the boss three times per second. Let's be real. You have to constantly dodge stuff. And this is probably going to be all the way down to sub 1 million DPS uh, uptime. And that's why the boss actually took so long for me to do on Uber Siri Exarch. Now, there is something to be said about making the character tankier. So you can tank through a lot more stuff and actually be attacking and be in the range and have the maximum trauma stacks. And that's probably the better way of doing it. So that's why a tankier character a lot of times it's better than a non like super high DPS character that is super squishy. It's better to be tankier and that matters a lot. So let's talk about some of the uber bosses for, whoa, what is going on here? So let's still talk about some of the uber bosses. Unless you have a lot of DPS, melee feels really, really bad for uber bosses. So... Unless you're super tanky, you constantly have to dodge, like I said before, and you have very, very little time to attack. So if we go by the fights, Uber Uber Elder, what about that fight? Well, Uber Uber Elder has this one fascinating thing where every single projectile decides to destroy your totem. So you put down totems here, and the totems just constantly die. 
The elder projectile one shots it. The shaper being one shots it. Oh, look, he kills the totem. I put down the totems again. Let's see how long they last for. Well, the beam just destroyed the totems again. And yeah, you can see not that much damage up time. You have to constantly move around from the ball. The elder stuff, you have to orb walk in a circle so that it doesn't hit you. And there is no way you're getting that much attacks per second. Now, some fights actually have a literal DPS check, making the fight near impossible like you saw Uber Syrian Exar. If you actually don't focus the dog and you don't maximize your damage during the ball phase, so you have to do the ball phase while also trying to min-max your DPS on the dog that spawns, you will literally have like three dogs chasing you and without a lot of tankiness, you will literally die. Another problem with melee is there is a lot of degen in the fights. You have the greats from Uber Syrian XR, you have the puddles on Uber Uber Elder, Uber Eater of Worlds doesn't really have any degen, but what's the other fights? So you have Uber Cortex, which has a lot of the ground degen. And there's a lot of fights where Leaky Shade is MVP. And this is the note right here. Take 50% less damage over time. However, the problem with Leaky Shade is it's not really reachable for a lot of melee builds. Now, this is reachable if you're playing Lightning Strike or something like that, or something that uses Nightblade, but for a lot of people who are trying to play some left side tree melee build, it is incredibly, incredibly punishing not being able to spec into Lethe Shade. So, oh yeah, fights like Uber Cyrus might have some degen, so you just actually step in the puddle. And Uber Cyrus is absurd. There is so much ground degen that you need to be having a lot of strike range in order to do the fight. You can't, the only time you can actually do damage on Uber Cyrus is actually in the corridor. So the tunnel is actually the main time that you can do damage. Now, Uber Eater of Worlds is another fight that is terrible. You have to constantly be moving to not get one shot by the tentacles. And the damage uptime that you have is actually awful. The best time to actually do damage on Uber Eater of Worlds is when they spawn the riding mass and it's summoning the tentacles and that, or the things that fall from the sky or whatever. And that's actually the best time to do damage. Now... Melee is very weird in the sense that traditional melee, where you actually think that you're actually meleeing the boss with an auto attack, like Bone Shatter is terrible. Like, there's no way to really describe it. There's huge disadvantages for bossy until your single target is super, super high, like 10 million plus without any of these conditionals, or you're very, very tanky, so you can just AFK. Now, Lightning Strike and Helix, however, are probably two of the strongest uber bossers outside of traps or mines. And that's kind of weird. Like, why is Lightning Strike and Helix so much better? Well, it's really just the fact that they actually do a lot of damage. And they're also able to do damage from a little bit further away, allowing you to get more damage uptime. Now, having to rely on totems for a majority of your damage makes your damage uptime feel painful. Now, may... A lot of builds like Panopticon is used for annoy, but without the totems, you actually do very, very pitiful damage. It's hard to really meet that DPS check for a lot of uber bosses without the totems, without really, really good gear. Now, something I want to really quickly touch on is that the best way to min-max melee builds for uber bossing is definitely to take advantage of the focus mod. If you say that most of your damage uptime has to be within these damage windows, focus is perfect for that. You can get focus shock on your rings and then you can get double damage while focus on your axe. And that is definitely the best way to take advantage of what GGG gives you in order to play melee. But in the end, melee will make you better at bossing. And when you actually play another build like Lighting Conduit or Trapper, it will actually feel like a complete breeze because you actually do damage. Because a 1 mil DPS pop on Seismic Trap will be much higher than a 5-6 mil Bone Shatter pop. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this has been an eye-opening experience on why true melee is actually so bad and why DPS numbers on POB that people provide for melee builds are oftentimes incredibly not accurate. But thanks for watching. I hope you find more mirrors, exalted orbs, and mage bloods and divines than me. And see you next time. Bye. Dad.